Good evening everyone, I'm Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this video. Circle chords and areas. I was asked to present a video on just areas which are determined by chords found in circles. Even though this video happens to be slightly out of pace in terms of the integration techniques we know, it's fine. I've presented videos like these, derivation or area videos for integrals we are not familiar with, but as a means of just understanding and developing further appreciation for integral calculus, let's just look at this video. We know at a very basic level what a chord is. This right here is a chord. Any line which goes from one side of the circle to the other side and the most easy chord to deal with is the diameter because this is a specific chord which goes to the center of that circle. So a diameter is a chord going from one side to the other side but to the center. If you are to create an area bounded by that chord it's very easy to determine this area because if you know what the area of the circle is the area entire circle you just have to in this instance divide it by two and you'll get the area bounded by the chord not the area of the chord but the area of the circle bounded by that chord which would be this area right here and then you're looking up or whether you're looking down it's very easy the difficulty which arises for chords that create areas within a circle is when the chord does not happen to go to the center of the circle. If supposedly this is the center and we have a, a chord going up over here then we're looking at this area or this region bounded by the curve. Here's curve one. The other curve is right here. The outer circumference of this circle. How do you actually calculate this? Because you're not looking at a diameter anymore. You're not even looking at a radius let alone a diameter. But how do you go about doing the area determination for this space over here? It's not too hard if you think of things in terms of integral calculus. We look at this question here in very easy geometric way, then we look at it using integral calculus. If you have a radius here, an equation of a circle which is x squared plus y squared is equal to one, you know the radius is equal to one. You know at any of these points right here, you can easily calculate what these values are. Zero comma minus one, one comma zero. These are all my quadrant points over here, zero comma one and minus one comma zero. If we were to draw the similar representation as I just showed you previously, and we were to look at this area right over here, how can we do it? Just using geometry, it's not too hard. If you look at just the area of the entire circle, it's pi r square. Here, the radius is one. The area of the entire circle is just pi. But we know we're looking at this being included, this being included, this here, and this part right over here. What we have to find is determination of this remaining part, the shaded portion. If we knew the area of the entire circle was that, pi, and we were to take the areas of these little dotted regions, we would get that if we were to minus the sum of these dotted regions from the total. And you know, each of these here is a sector, not too hard to understand that, except here we end up having a triangle. This right here must be pi over four in terms of area. This right here is pi over four because the total area is pi. Each of these sectors, quadrant sectors is a pi over four, pi over four, pi over four, pi over four. And this right here looks like a triangle it'll be one times one divided by two, half times base times height, and you know this right here is a one over two. So the area of this shaded region, let's just say SR, shaded region is equal to pi, the area of the entire circle minus the cumulative sums of all of these items, pi over four plus pi over four plus pi over four is three pi over four plus one over two. You take the area of the entire circle and you minus from that this cumulative region, which is this other white part, and it'll give you the area which you are looking for. And we can easily get that and we can do that in a fractional answer. We can do that in a numerical answer. We have three pi over four plus one over two and that'll be three pi plus two over four. We can numerically do this. We just do pi minus this cumulative sum here and we'll post the answer. We get over here 0 0.285398. So the area of the shaded region right over here is the area we're looking at and it's 0.285398. What we want to do is actually do the determination of this shaded area which is created from a circle that specifically has this chord. But we'll use integral calculus and that right there will be the gist of this video. Okay, so now comes the interesting part. Using integral calculus, we'll determine the area of the shaded region. The shaded region which is created by drawing a chord, which does not happen to go through the center, but it goes from one point to the other point on that circular curve. And we have to do the determination, and we've done it via geometry right here. We had 0.285398. Our answer determined from integral calculus should match that, and it will. How can we do this area determination? Well, first you want to decide and what I want to do is integration with respect to dx. 
we'll do it with respect to dx and that's what I wanted to decide and that's what I've decided. We have to look here now in terms of top boundary curve and a lower boundary curve. My top boundary curve is this circular curve from this interval x value of minus 1 to this x value of 0. That's my top boundary curve. We'll put that equation over here. Area with regards to x is equal to what our interval will be. We have to determine that yt minus yb lower boundary curve with respect to dx. Our top boundary curve will be the area of the curve which you know has to be presented in the term y equals. We know our original equation was x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. y is equal to square root of 1 minus x squared because this equation on the circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared where r is equal to 1. That's my top boundary curve which is this right here. The curve created by the circle. The lower boundary curve is this linear line which happens to go to this coordinate and this coordinate and it must be an equation of a linear line y is equal to mx plus b. I have these two coordinate pairs. It's easy to determine the slope. You can do y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 using these two coordinate pairs and the slope here will be a 1 and you have an, a y-intercept of 1 so it will be y is equal to x plus 1. 1x one plus 1 because the slope is 1. And this right here is my one equation, this here is my other equation. And they're both in the y equals format and we're doing integration with respect to dx. Now all we have to do is determine our intervals. Our interval will be exactly what's shown here in terms of arrows. You're going from minus 1 up to 0 in terms of x values, x values. Okay, x1 and x2. Suddenly our equation begins to sh take shape. Our yt top boundary curve is a circular curve right here. Our lower boundary curve is this linear line which is right here and we have our intervals. Our interval is minus 1 to 0. We'll keep the interval like this. I'm not going to start flipping this out using a minus out here because I'm still going from a small number to a larger number, lower limit to upper limit in a proper orientation and this will be what we'll be doing here is a definite integration procedure. Top boundary curve is that square root of 1 minus x square. You know within this we'll have a trigonometric expression hidden which will bring trigonometric substitution techniques. Lower boundary curve is x plus 1 dx. What I'm going to do is separate everything here across the minus sign. From minus 1 to 0 I have this 1 minus x square dx. Then I have this minus sign. A new interval again everything is the same interval I'm just sep separating it x plus 1 dx. What I want to do is look only here at this part and you know based on the videos I presented in the recent past with all those area derivations we always ended up with the cosine square theta and then that split up and we looked at all of that we will do that again except we won't take any shortcuts today. If a is equal to 1 and you will learn these trigonometric substitution techniques x is equal to sine theta dx is equal to cosine theta d theta. And of course you have to generate new intervals. Everything with respect to this, here's my x, x value equaling sine theta. If sine theta is equal to minus 1, theta is equal to inverse sine of minus 1 which is a minus pi over 2. If sine theta is equal to 0, theta is equal to inverse sine of that 0 and that's 0. So here we end up having minus pi over 2. Here I'm going to get 1 minus sine square theta dx is cosine theta d theta. Let's just look over here. 1 minus sine square theta using substitution and trigonometric identity. I get a cosine square theta and I have a cosine theta. The square root of cosine square theta is a cosine theta. That cosine theta multiplies with this cosine theta. You get cosine square theta. And you see this a number of times that you are familiar with this. You have a cosine square theta d theta. But I have to use it power reducing substitution formula here 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2 is equal to this. So let's bring the power reducing formula and you've seen this before too. 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2 d theta. What I can do is separate everything over here across the positive sign and split this up and I'm going to rewrite all of this but with the split up integral. So let's do it. We'll have 0 minus pi over 2 1 over 2 d theta plus 1 over 2 is 0 minus pi over 2 cosine 2 theta d theta. So all of this has given me all of that. And then I still have this part right here. Let's write it out. Minus 1, 0, x plus 1 dx. This part right here is not too hard. We can integrate it. We have theta coming out of here with a 1 over 2 and a minus pi over 2 and a 0. 
by means of another polynomial substitution technique if u is equal to 2 theta du is equal to 2 d theta d theta is equal to du over 2 it will impact these items such that you will get 1 over 4 you will have a integral of cosine u which will be a sine u come out and these intervals will become minus pi to 0. You can take some of this procedure here for granted because you'll see this in the trigonometric substitution techniques all of this play out. This right here is not hard it's just a basic polynomial integration x becomes x squared over 2. 1 becomes just x again from 0 to minus 1. Now all we have to do is integrate this. This right here will zero out. Think about it. Sine zero minus sine of minus pi. All of the zeros out. We're essentially just looking at this and this. When you look over here at this part right here, what do we get? We get one over two, upper limit, lower limit, and the difference of the two is zero minus minus pi over two minus. Let's look at this part right here. Zero will come in places of x, and then minus one will come in the places of x. And you look at the difference of the two. As you put zeros here, we get zero square over 2 minus minus 1 square over 2 that's just the first part in this first expression plus now let's look at this x you get 0 minus minus 1 and that now we just have to do is clean this out 0 square minus minus 1 over 2 is just what it's a minus 1 over 2 plus 1 minus 1 over 2 plus 1 you can do this on the side here you get a minus 1 over 2 plus 1 when you clean this out, you know what you're getting is a positive 1 over 2. The minus 1 over 2 plus 1 is a positive 1 over 2. Let's bring everything out over here. We have 1 over 2 times this pi over 2. 0 minus minus pi over 2 is a positive pi over 2. Which multiplies with this 1 over 2, you get a pi over 4 minus 1 over 2. This right here ends up being your answer. You can do pi minus 2 over 4. This right here is the fractional answer of this area representation but we can do numerical answer just do pi minus 2 divided by 4 and I get 0.285398 and that's exactly mirroring what I have over here which is exactly what I wanted so this question is not too hard except for the part where you have to think about this trigonometric substitution techniques because you haven't learned it yet but you've seen it enough that you are recognizing some of these aspects play out but what did this procedure involve in terms of integral calculus? You start with what do you want to do with regards to dx or dy? We want to do here with regards to dx. Then we're looking at an interval along the x-axis, minus 1 up to that 0. We have a top boundary curve, lower boundary curve. Top boundary curve is a circular curve, lower boundary curve is a linear line. We can develop both of those equations very easily. Then you put them into this format right here with your equations substituted for yt and yb. And you integrate them through and you get back to your result and that's about it a problem which could have arisen over here would have been right in this part right here right in this part where a silly mistake could be made by plugging in these zeros and minus ones and not coming at the right one or two you'd have to be careful that you do everything here mathematically correct least so that you end up with a good final answer and that's all i wanted to show you in this video how chords impact circles in terms of areas and you cannot always be taking a chord going to the center like a diameter for granted because there are other types of chords and those other types of chords with regards to area determinations are generally more tricky and it's easy just to use integral calculus to look at those type of areas. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.